All right, we're live. So hello, everyone. Again, I'm Kobe Kushner. I'm an analyst here at Red Cloud. Uh, we're about to hear from Sherman Dahl of SKRR Exploration. This is a company with several precious and base metal properties in Saskatchewan, which is one of the top mining investment jurisdictions in the world. Sherman, you have about 15 minutes, give or take, which will follow with uh, roughly five minutes of Q&A. Uh, viewers, feel free to ask your questions at any time, and we'll get to as many as we can. So with that, take it away, Sherman. Thank, thank you so much, guys. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be presenting. This is our first um, introduction with, with, with Red Cloud. And so again, we're, we're really pleased to be, to be involved and be able to present today. SKRR is a, a company that was formed about three years ago. Um, the SK in, in SKRR stands for Saskatchewan, which you alluded to is considered one of the top mining jurisdictions globally. Um, the R, one of the R stands for, for Ron Nedelinsky, and the second R stands for Ross McElroy. So Ron Nedelinsky, in particular, has been doing business in Saskatchewan for many, many years. Ross McElroy, of course, is a, a very well-known geologist and the, the CEO and president of Fission Uranium. The, the, the company was formed really to... to, to explore the vast Trans-Hudson Corridor in Saskatchewan. A lot of people that aren't familiar with the Trans-Hudson Corridor, it's really a, a very key theme to understand when looking at investing in SKRR or looking at your investment as a shareholder in SKRR. We really were, we formed the company to, to really stake more advanced properties in Saskatchewan. We, we had a, a, a shareholder yesterday commented on it as staking for ounces. So a lot of all of our projects are, are more advanced projects that have had drilling on them that have are really properties of, of merit. That was the whole idea was to, to marry the, the investment, the, the geological brilliance of Ron Nedelinsky, who's one of the early explorers in the in the Athabasca Basin, as well as Larange Goldbelt and in, in, in the larger Trans Hudson Quarter. Same with Ross McElroy, as you'll see his bio slightly later in the presentation, a very accomplished geologist who's discovered more than, than one or two properties in his career. And I think Ron Nedelinsky's discovered four gold mines, which is you know four more than, than most of them. The Trans Hudson Cor Corridor, as I mentioned, is, is very important to understand because the Trans Hudson Corridor actually is, is very well known as the home stake mining district, which is home to about 40 to 50 million ounces in the Dakotas, then the Trans Hudson Corridor actually, you know, dips below Regina, Saskatoon and Saskatchewan at a depth that you, you wouldn't explore, but it's there. And then it resurfaces in, 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 in the very well-known CB Santoy deposit. So this is really important to understand because SSR mining, one of their flagship properties is the CB Santoy mines that is, is the main producing gold mine in Saskatchewan. However, just slightly northeast of, of CB Santoy is the mass of Flin Flon ore body, which is, is home to more than one BMS style deposits that also host some amazing copper and base metal deposits. Another well-known company that's recently been in the news is Foran, which also has a copper deposit in the area. So the Trans Hudson Quarter is this, you know, I'm not a geologist, I'm more the investment, the investment um, capital markets uh, background. But the, the, the Trans Hudson Corridor is host to these greenstone belts. And as Ross McElroy has often stated, the, the Trans Hudson Corridor is, is really one of the most underexplored areas for gold in, in Canada. It's, it's often considered to be like the Abitibi, Abitibi area, but you know, 50 years ago. So you've got one operating gold mine in Saskatchewan versus 100 operating gold mines in the Abitibi or in, in the Red Lake districts. So it's really, even though it's one of the top jurisdictions in Canada, it's one of the, the least explored. And in some cases it's, you know, there's one one hundredth or even one one thousandth of the drilling that exists in, in, in Saskatchewan Trans Hudson Corridor compared to Abitibi, Red Lake, uh, even the Golden Triangle. So I'm gonna try and walk, I'll, I'll, I'll walk through the presentation, but again, you know, I highlight the fact that I'm, I'm not a geologist and, you know, the whole vision of, of building, you know, a company SKRR was to, to, to advance projects that are properties of merit that have shown significant mineralization, either in, in previous drilling or even surface sampling. But it's very well known that throughout the Larange Gold Belt and throughout 
the Trans Hudson Corridor that there is significant amount of gold in the, with the main operating mine being CB Santoy. We've also recently seen that SSR Mining um, has, 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 has recently bought out Taiga resources for the Fisher property, which is just south of the, of the, the very significant CB Santoy deposits. It's also interesting to note that you know, gold in Saskatchewan is, is again being underexplored. I had someone recently ask me if, if I knew which was the biggest gold producer in Saskatchewan, which I would have assumed would have been CB Santoy. But it turns out that the Flin Flon ore body, <clears throat> which is home to some, some very well known and massive copper deposits, has spun out about 7 million ounces of gold as, as, <clears throat> as a byproduct, if you will. So 7 million ounces of gold has come out of the Flin Flon ore body, which again is in the heart of the trans Hudson corridor, which extends from the Dakotas through the home stake deposits up into the CB Santoy, and then it hooks over into Flin Flon or into uh, Manitoba into the Snow Lake deposits. So as a general macro, we also know that we've, we've got a, an excellent jurisdiction that's underexplored, you know, we clearly have, uh, you know, we're, we're entering into an era where, you know, we've got a, a new gold rally that, that is significantly under, un, un, underway. We recently had even some of the leaders in the industry, like Mark Bristow from Barrick, that has, you know, suggested that they, they want to explore more in Canada. Well, where would you do that? Certainly the Saskatchewan Trans Hudson Corridor offers some incredible opportunities. So that's kind of the general theme. We know that gold is, is, is going to be more in demand and, and the, the spike in gold is, is obviously something that we're, we're, we're seeing as, as, as we go. It's been tougher on the juniors, companies like SKRR that have developed and gone out and staked these ounces. Now we're out exploring them. We've had three drill programs now at our, our flagship Olson property. And the Olson property, again, has a um, significant amount of drilling that was done historically, which we're following up. And we're having huge success within the Olson property. We just finished our third drill program, 10 holes that we put into the Olson program that now are all headed into the lab. Um, all the holes were mineralized. And again, we're, we're, we're seeing mineralization and previous results in the Olson gold showing, which I'll, I'll speak to, that are very similar to some of the results that were taken out of the, the, the CB Santoy. And that's not really a surprise, again, when you've got these greenstone belts that are host of VMS deposits, gold deposits, they don't happen. It's not like it's one particular deposit. They, they, they tend to come in clusters. So again, I, I talked to the, the, the leadership that we have to execute. You can see that some of the companies that Ron Nedelinski and Ross McElroy have been involved in. So these are very seasoned geologists. We've also been able to, within our advisory board and our shareholder base, having some, some very high quality names that, that are that the, the kind of investors that are longer term investors that, that want to take advantage of or you know, you know, be involved in an underexplored and emerging and safe area. Saskatchewan's open for business. It's got a huge amount of potential with the amount of gold occurrences. It's got a proven history of, of developing not small deposits. We're talking large multi-million ounce deposits, both in the Flin Flon area within, and also within the CB and the pedigree of the management. So Here's a map. You can see what I'm talking about by the Trans Hudson Corridor. The home stake deposits to the south. The corridor extends, so that mineralization extends all the way up into the CB Santoy area, and then it hooks over into, into, into uh, Manitoba. So we've developed probably one of the largest land packages. We're very actively drilling the Olson property, which we just completed. In June, we're going to be heading to, to drill our second drill program at the Manson Bay property, which is a gold-rich VMS deposit. It's interesting because if again, if you go to the Flin Flon ore body, which is very close to Manson Bay, it's a very copper enriched deposit that show it has gold showing. So that's the nature of these VMS deposits. They have you know multiple types of metals and mineralization. Watts Lake is one that we recently acquired. It's a zinc property. So not only are we exploring for gold, but we have interest in, in Watts Lake and which is a zinc. Um, a, a zinc deposit. It's non-43101, much like our Manson Bay, which is a non-43101 resource on the gold side. Watts Lake has a non-43101 on the, on, the, on the zinc side. And then Father Lake is a, a nickel project further to the north. So wonderful setting, lots of opportunities. Um, and it's really, again, I go back to that main theme of 
our vision was to develop a Saskatchewan focused company that could go out stake for ounces and stake for, you know, not, you know, properties of merit, raise the capital with our capital market strength and then use the geological brilliance of, of, of our partners and, and, and our shareholders, Ross McElroy and Ron Nedelinski. We also have a tremendous relationship with Tim Tremundi and his team at Eagle Plains which controlled TerraLogics. Their TerraLogics is, our, is, is handling all of our drilling. We've had great success working with them. So you've got a team in place that is, you know, truly understands the Saskatchewan trans Hudson Corridor and really looking to have success by uncovering a deposit that is going to become a mine. So again, I, I go back to the Olson Gold property. You can see some of the showings and you can see some of the drill results that are are fairly recent um, and we we just wrapped up a 10 hole drill program which is going to be our third third drill program in the area so the olson gold property is 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 host to high grade gold you can see some of the results and you, for example we look at hole number 17 where you have 20 meters of over a gram and 1.2 meters of nine point so it's very very common of, of, of the Saskatchewan Gold District to produce high grade results um, in, in, these, in, in these greenstone belts. The Irving property, I'm just gonna to touch on a few of the different uh, properties that we do have. The Irving property is a very large property which surrounds the CB Gold Deposit, the Santoy Gold, Depos Gold Deposits. This is one that's, that we, we have not drilled yet, but it, it's another example of the, of the quality of the, the properties in, in, in the jurisdiction that we've, we've accumulated in SKRR. The Manson Bay property, I'd like to highlight the Manson Bay property. We have 100% interest in this property. Um, it's a VMS, gold and rich VMS deposit. Some incredible historic results of, of, uh, that you can see on the left. We did a 12 hole drill program. We're going back into Manson Bay because we've had some really nice discovery holes within the Manson Bay. So it's another property, finished our drill program at Olson. Great news flow coming up because we've got assays that are gonna be pending from the Olson property. As we bring those assays in, we're gonna be moving over to Manson Bay to, for our second drill program at Manson Bay. The Thingle property, it's again, an, an another historic property that you know showing seven and a half meters of 11 grams per ton a property that we're not planning to drill this year but so we've got a we've got a good portfolio of properties and two flagship properties being the Olson property and the Manson Bay that we're aggressively drilling this year we, we've also you know, we're not just a gold company we also are very interested in the base metal um, sector and so we've got two properties a nickel property and a zinc property which I'll just touch on briefly we all know that the, the, the energy transition is, is going to be huge for the commodity business. You know, you change transportation, you, you, you just train, change everything. So, you know, our zinc property in, in Watts Lake, we plan to look at some, you know, poten potential joint ventures to develop that property. Same with our Father Lake property, which I believe in that area, in, in, the, in the nickel, Rio Tinto has been active. So their forans had some great success with their copper project, Machiavelli Bay. So we think it's just a matter of time before people really start to realize the quality of the projects we have and how we're advancing these. Um, and you know, SKR at, at, at a current share price of seven cents is in our view, dramatically undervalued. We've got about two and a half million in cash. We've got a, we've got a good share structure and we're, we're rapidly exploring in particular the Olson, Olson property and the Manson Bay property. So we're very excited about the prospects for this year. Again, Watts Lake, a zinc property, again, in a top jurisdiction. We do not have plans to you know, actively drill it this year, but we are looking to look for JV partners that, that want to partner with us on, on this property. It's a large, large land package, high-grade zinc, lead, silver property. And, and, and again, if we look at the market cap of something like 4N, um, you, you're going to see that this is a very similar VMS-style type deposit. Our team... Again, led by you know Ross McElroy, myself, um, Ian Butler from Cal Tires, one of our shareholders, Jeremy Ross, who's been in the capital markets business. So again, you know, we've tried to marry the capital market strength along with the geological strength. We've got a first-class advisory board. Brian Scanderbeg, for example, was the, the CEO of Claude before it was bought out by SSR Mining. Ron Nedelinski, Craig Roberts, 
uh, Michael Murphy and, and Mr. Mike Halverson, who's very well known in the capital markets as well. So we've, we've got a very strong board and a very strong advisory board to help us lead us and advise us over the next number of years. The share, the share price and the, the cash is, is, is that the, it's obviously updated as of February we did a financing uh, in the last couple of months. So we're sitting about two and a half million of cash. We've got a very low market cap with the, with the current share price. Um, you know, not a huge amount of volume in, in, in the stock, but certainly as we develop and, and create our news flow over the next couple of months, we're expecting some, some, some great things. So with that, I think, you know, I'll wrap up that that's my overall presentation. And I go and I go back just to reiterate to, to my, you know, probably the most significant slide is the emphasis on us exploring the, 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 the dramatically underexplored emerging gold area of the Trans Hudson Corridor in, in the heart of Saskatchewan, one of, the, one, of the, one of the best mining jurisdictions in the world. We think it's just a matter of time before we, we build out the type of deposit that we can point to that's gonna be a mine and then we'll start to attract the attention, not only of investors, but of, of some of the, the bigger mining companies. Great, so, uh, you know, great place to end it and very well-timed uh, Sherman. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, you know, we'll move on to the Q&A portion. Just a reminder, you can ask your questions at any time. So, you know, Ron Nedelinski, you know, huge heavy hitter, Canadian Mining Hall of Famer. How involved is he? You know, is, is he more so retired? I know he's on your advisory board, but how involved is he on the day-to-day -day, uh, operations? You know, great question. You know, obviously Ron isn't involved on day-to-day -day operations. You know, I've I've been working with Ron for many years, going back to the, the days of Viceroy when he discovered Guacamay in Argentina. So I have a very you know good relationship, not only myself but other advisors. You know, Ron Nedelint or uh, Ross McElroy, Mike Halverson. You know, we've been invo involved for with Ron for many years. So it's really mm -hmm. it, you know, I can pick up the phone anytime. You know, I was recently visited Ron in in Victoria. He's very accessible, very knowledgeable. You know, he's, he knows all these properties intimately. You know, he was involved in the, the original, I don't know, I'm sure if it was the staking, but he was involved with, you know, the Santoy Gap discovery, not the discovery, but, you know, I think, you know, Ron's company missed it by six meters or, you know, so, it, it, you know, Ron should really write a book about all of his success and, and the fun things that he's done and, and, and in Saskatchewan. So he was a real visionary a number of years ago to realize that Saskatchewan was underexplored. Um, so we have full access to Ron and he, he's a, he's a, he's a wealth of knowledge, but he, so, and he's also strong in the capital markets. He knows how to structure deals. Mm -hmm. He, you know, if I've got a question about historic things around a single lake, you know, he, he's, he's been there. He knows Watts Lake. He knows, he knows every single property and, you know, he'll, he'll often, last time I was with him in Victoria, he pulled out a big file folder full of data on a thingo. And so it's a it's a great relationship with 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 Ron and we we shamelessly promote his name and he doesn't seem to mind. So <laughs> you guys also promote the Homestake Gold Mine. You know that's that's down there to the south and that's that's a banded iron formation. Are any of your targets uh, similar in that sense? You know, a uh, fifth targets. Well, that that would really be a question for for Ross. You know, I I, okay. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to step out and say too much about that. I know that. I've seen marketing with other companies that aren't as, as, as big as an active as we are pointing to deposits in, in the, in the, in the corridor in Saskatchewan that are very similar to Homestake. I haven't heard Ross say that. Um, so Ross would really be much better to answer that, but overall the whole system is, is there. It's, it's, it's the same system as I understand it. Even the Athabasca Basin isn't part of the Trans Hudson Corridor, but when that was formed, whatever, a couple billion years ago, it, 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 that, that whole mineralization, I mean, Saskatchewan is just, you know, completely mineralized and it's all mm -hmm. part of, you know, that, how that all formed when it was mountains and oceans way back when. So um, I'm not sure, if they, again, that's a geological thing that I I'm, I'm only know a little, little bit about. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, it's it's evident from your drill results that you guys have some fertile ground, and it's evident with CB being right next door. You know, that's a, a well, really and not only, productive mines. Not, not only CB, Flin Flon, 
Like okay. I've spent, I've had three or four trips into Flin Flon. And if you've never been to Flin Flon, I would, you know, you only need to be there for about a day, but I would highly recommend it. If you're a hockey fan and you're a mine, like, it's like, you know, if, if you're in the mining business, to me, you should go to Flin Flon. It's like being, you know, a capitalist and not going to see Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett. Like, you know, Flin Flon is an incredible place. I don't think a lot of people realize it was the second largest infrastructure program in the world when that was first built. And it, it's, a, it's an incredible complex. And like I said, the, the spinoff was 7 million ounces of gold, not, not to mention the right. copper. And so if you ever get a chance, there's, there's some great hockey players that came out of Flin Flon and they got, you know, a fantastic Memorial arena and yeah. it, the, the, all the, all the, all the, it's, it's amazing. You go in there and all the, the, uh, the there's no underground sewer. It's all in, in boxes on top because it's all the, it's all, it's built on a rock. So that, okay. that, 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 that is the trans Hudson corridor. So it's, it's, and that's where Foran, they're not that far from that. And they're into a major copper deposit. So the, there's, not to... just, there's, there's not just one or two of them. It's kind of like the Iberian pyrite belt in Spain. VMS deposits come in clusters. Yep, it's true. So I'll have to let my wife know we'll be canceling our Mexico vacation and we'll be going to Flin Flon. Well, in the so. summer, you can, tell, you, know, you can fish, you can, there's all kinds of wonderful things in Saskatchewan. I'm sure she'd love that as opposed to <laughs> hanging out on a beach, but uh, unfortunately we have to wrap that up. So thank you, Sherman and yeah, SKRR and all the best with the year ahead. Um, next up are our last two presentations of the conference. So uh, stay here and you'll hear from Klondike Gold. Alternatively, switch over to stream one for Silver Viper. Thanks again. Thank you, guys.